Hi, I'm Malcolm McGrath, cabinet maker, and uh, this is a little video for people who might be considering working for my uh, company. I have a small shop in central Toronto near Bayview and Eglinton area, uh, and we focus on interior cabinetry, kitchens, built-ins, closets, vanities, things like that. It's all custom, it's all detail, and as a small shop, the focus of our work is not on sort of mass production projects, but uh, one-off custom projects for clients. The way the shop is set up is basically we have everything that a bigger shop or a mass production shop would have, but on a smaller scale, uh, so we can focus on detail-oriented projects. There's not a lot of heavy lifting in the shop. Uh, the shop's set up with uh, hydraulics and lift tables and forklifts. Um, so basically, the hard work is all done by machines. In the shop, we have pretty much everything you would have in a bigger shop, but uh, on a smaller scale. Uh, we have a table saw with a cross-cutting sled for kitchen production, uh, miter saw, edge bander, we've got a hinge boring machine, Line boring machine, thickness planer, and we also have a transit van which is basically set up as a kind of mobile cabinet shop. This is our CNC machine. Um, it's an industrial quality one, but it's not a huge one. Uh, the reason I didn't bother getting a big one is because I have a supplier that has five machines running full time all the time and if I need 50 or 60 MDF doors I just send them an email and I can have them back in a few days. So we use this for uh, specialty items and small parts and detail parts uh, and uh, it's a handy machine to have. In the shop we've got a paint booth with uh, top of the line professional spray equipment. Uh, got an HVLP, we usually use this for smaller jobs. I've got an airless sprayer we use for heavy primers and uh, high volume work. All our finishing work is done with the uh, Air Mix, the Kremlin. These are really fantastic professional guns and we've got one for uh, colors and also another one for clear lacquers and varnishes and things. So for the most part uh, the work is not physically uh, very uh, difficult. You'll be busy all day but it's not really heavy lifting but the work is very mentally challenging. I have friends and they say, hey, do you listen to podcasts while you're working all day? And I say, no, I don't listen to podcasts because I can't afford to. Everything in a cabinet shop is dangerous and it's expensive. So if I make a mistake, I can cut my finger off or I can ruin $500 worth of materials. So you have to be focused all the time. And also, not only do you have to be focused on what you're doing with the tools and the materials, but as a small custom shop, you can be doing a lot of different things in a day. You might be um, doing cleanup in the morning, you might be filling some material bins, and then assembling some parts, sanding something, spraying something, labeling some tools, writing out some new instructions. You might be doing 25 or 30 things in a day, and each one you have to focus on what you're doing. 
So that demands a lot of concentration. So anybody who's looking for a job where they don't have to think about what they're doing, then this isn't the right place. Work in a cabinet shop is uh, messy and it's dirty. So uh, this is a shirt that I've been wearing around for the last few days. It's covered in paint, covered in caulking, covered in sawdust. Uh, I buy my work clothes at Value Village and I throw them out after a month or two. So if you're someone who's really concerned about looking cool and not getting dirty, then it's not really the job for you. But if you don't mind getting your hands dirty, it's a lot of fun. Because this is a business and not a hobby, efficiency is really important. Anybody could probably build a kitchen if they had six months or a year to do it, but it wouldn't be a business. So we've got to do it in a reasonable amount of time. And for that reason, I spent a lot of time focusing on modeling my organization on up-to-date management theories. Uh, in particular, the Toyota production system, because this is, this is the system that took Toyota from being a little small car manufacturer that made a few trucks, a few thousand trucks at the end of World War II to being the world's largest manufacturer of cars. Um, so it's a whole philosophy of organization and the idea of the philosophy is to eliminate waste. And there's a lot of different aspects to it. For example, one idea of waste is just um, looking for things and trying to find things and wandering around. And so in my shop, for example, every tool has a label. For example, everything here is white. Uh, if you notice, these tools, they have white tape on them. So every location has a different color. Inside the shop is white. Every rack has a letter in the shop. So this is D and every tool on rack D has a number. So the reason behind this is if you find this tool lying around anywhere, you can pick it up and say, oh, it's white, it goes in the main shop, it's D, it goes on this rack, and it's number 34, so it goes there. This may seem crazy to have every tool in the truck and the shop labeled and numbered and lettered, but the result is you never spend any time looking for tools. So um, there's a whole philosophy, organizational philosophy behind this, and it's something I spend a lot of time on both setting up and trying to educate people on this philosophy. So one of the things I've done at the shop is spend a lot of time developing training systems uh, to bring people up to speed, to make it easier for them to learn, and also to make it easier to learn where you're kind of not on site, where it's crucial, you make a tiny mistake and it costs a fortune, Whereas, you know, if you've got some kind of mock-up or training system, you know, then you can learn where it's a less stressful environment. In terms of the paint booth, for example, I keep lots of old cans of old lacquer and old doors that uh, we don't need. And so you can practice spraying when it's not all that crucial. You can practice finishing work. In terms of cabinet construction, I've got a whole set of miniature sort of cabinets with all the instructions that are kind of pre-assembled and you can use these as references. Uh, and I have them for all the, the different types of cabinets. Here's a base cabinet, so a miniature base cabinet. You can see the, the feet. Uh, and the other thing I've done is actually set up uh, for some of the carpentry details, little, little training mock-ups that you can use to actually practice on. So this would be for baseboard, because in an old house, the walls are never straight, so of course this isn't straight. So this shows all the parts for a baseboard. You can see this is cut on the slope. And this one has a little cope joint in there. This one has got the, the slope cut on it. So this one set up as a sample, but basically I can just keep scraps of baseboard and you know you can take this and just practice your coat. And this is a little training cabinet that I made just for practicing on bloom hinges because the beauty of these hinges is, you know, you can straighten them out. And so you can see how the mechanism works to uh, level them all up. This is a mock-up of a crown molding assembly. Uh, these are a bit tricky. So I've got a mock-up to show how all the parts fit together. And you can see if this were the top of a cabinet, and there's the, the hinges, the, this assembly would go like this, and then I've got that coped, that little coped edge goes in there, and this piece goes here, and 
then you just run the crown around the top. Another training system we have, we keep a little tablet in the shop, and the tablet's connected to Wi-Fi, so and we've got a list, a uh, library of YouTube videos um, that are useful for the shop um, on various procedures, how to use certain tools and things, and we also have a Google Drive with some videos we've made, uh, also with instructions on how to perform various procedures and do things in the shop. So one of the training systems we use in the shop um, is these little procedure cards. They're visual, they're all pictures. This one, these ones were for the paint booth. This one's for cleaning the paint gun filter. And it's got a written instruction and a little visual picture. And uh, I think it just makes it a lot easier to remember all the steps in a procedure. And we try and have these basically all over the shop and even in the truck so that all the basic procedures, you uh, always know what to do. In terms of training, one of the things I stress a lot in the shop is just proper safety procedures. Dust mask. If you're doing something that creates a lot of dust. And safety glasses. Hearing protection. If you work for my company, uh, then really you're going to have to learn a lot of things. You're going to have to learn about how to use all the hand tools, planes, chisels, hammers, basic power tools, drills, circular saws, jigsaws. You'll have to learn how to use the cabinet saws, the table saw, miter saw, as well as some of the production equipment, edge bander, line boring, the hinge boring machine. So they're going to learn about painting, paint booth, sanding, proper finishing, spray work. They can learn about CNC. There's a lot of trim carpentry involved in what we do too. Kitchen installations involve a lot of trim carpentry, as well as basic information about home renovations, learn about cabinet construction as well as a lot of organizational skills. And guys who work for me, they say actually the organizational skills they learn are really useful. So there's a lot you can learn in this shop. And as a small shop, you get to do something of everything. It's not like a big mass production shop. I've had guys come to me and they, you know, they've just done one thing for three years. You really need to learn to do everything. To work in the shop, you need to be, I think, reliable and eager to learn. You've got to be very detail oriented. You have to be thinking about what you're doing and focused. Uh, it's important to be friendly because we're working with clients. So you know, you've got to put on a good face uh, when you're doing an installation. You have to be physically fit. You have to be ready to be active. It's not a sedentary job. We're moving all the time. In the shop, there's not a lot of heavy lifting, but sometimes we've got to carry things on an installation, lift things up, like carry cabinets up a set of stairs to install, so you have to be ready to do some physical work. A driver's license is useful. You know, computer literate's important, like Microsoft Word, Google, Instagram. Uh, if you have experience with SketchUp or Adobe, all that's really useful because we have to do drawings sometimes and, and uh, things like that. Construction experience is useful. Any experience with hand tools, power tools is useful. Good spatial sense. If you played with Lego as a kid, can you fix your own bike? All that, all that's really useful. And even an interest in manual things, like if you're interested in cooking or uh, sewing, anything where you, you actually had to sort of figure out spatial problems, because that's really what this is involved in. And training in other trades. Uh, I also speak Russian and English, so either one would, would, is fine really in terms of languages. You don't need to provide your own tools and you don't need to provide your own transportation. We've got a truck, we've got a minivan and a smaller vehicle uh, as well as I've got all the tools. So if you do end up working for me, there's a big demand for all these skills. Every time I go to one of my suppliers, I can see little ads posted on the wall, experienced cabinet makers needed or people with experience in a cabinet shop needed. People in the industry are desperate for people with these kinds of skills, so it will be easy to get a job. Finally, working in a cabinet shop, it's fun, it's interesting. You're doing real things, you're working with real people. The clients, when you do a good job, they are really happy and you see a product and you see a finished product and you really see something valuable that you can do.